Alrighty guys, welcome back to another GGF video, and today I'll be taking a look at the B850 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7. Now this board was sent when Aorus sent those two previous boards I covered, the Stealth, the newest one, and then also the new X3D Master Ice as well. So this one is a more budget-friendly board. Let me quickly take this out. Okay, quick look inside. I've got that side of cables, nothing else important in there we take this out so like those previous ones those two ice boards I covered they're on my channel if you want to check them out you can see them this one is more budget friendly uh, we're not going to have some of the I would say nicer features like a backplate on the back here nothing like that but in saying that I think most people in that category who are after a board like this probably don't really care too much, but if you're paying like four or five, six hundred dollars for a board, it is always welcomed to have that uh, backplate. So we are getting some features though, like the PCI EZ latch, that's this one here. That's always welcomed on these more affordable boards. It seems that it's now it's not just high-end boards getting this feature. And then also like this EZ latch here, for the M.2 covers, we have three, one, two, three M.2s, and these are also the quick release ones, and I'll we'll talk about those in a little bit. So let's just take a look at the board aesthetics, go around the board. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything to compare this to. I don't have any other sort of black or dark colored Aorus boards. Uh, one of the other main features that Aorus are boasting, it's not the newest X3D ones that has the Turbo Mode 2.0, this just has the standard turbo mode and it's meant to improve gaming performance about 18% as it uh, pretty much configures the core configuration on the CPU by disabling things like the secondary core complex dies, the CCDs, and also SMT. And in those previous videos where I talked about this, it's up to really you guys to see if that's going to be a benefit in games and so on. You've got to remember if you use your system for things like editing and stuff like that, you're obviously going to want SMT on and all that for those extra cores, but for gaming, it may help. Uh, that's the Wi-Fi antenna we'll talk a little bit later on i believe we do actually have power and reset over here power reset that is nice i really was not expecting to see that on a board like this and then i believe it also has your q flash on the back as well so that is a nice bonus as well getting those things but there is no, no two bit display for your boot bios led the only thing you're going to get are these little leds right here so we'll have one that says like the cpu memory vga and then boot normally when it cycles through those sometimes when you first boot your system it might go to cpu ram cpu ram if it's doing memory training then it will go to vga and then it normally goes green when it's on boot and you are good to go your system is going but if it fails on say memory you know there's an issue with memory i do like that method i'm not saying it's the best method but normally when you get that q code or whichever you then have to go to the menu or go to Google and start saying, look, I'm getting this code, hit up a forum, and then it could be VGA, it could be this, depending on what string of uh, the code lines up with could be the problem. But these will tell you sort of more direct on exactly what's wrong. Uh, power delivery, looking at 14 plus two plus two. That's it there. Nothing too over the top. I think the master boards I checked out recently, the master had 18 and I think the ice, uh, sorry, the stealth had 16. This one has 14, which is still plenty powerful for all of the current 9000 uh, Ryzen chips. Yes, this is an AMD board. It'll take the current Ryzen 9000. You can throw in the 7000 as well. You can also throw in 8000. I don't really talk about 8000 because they're not as popular. They're harder to get. And the 8000, you do dramatically lose a lot of performance in things like M.2 and PCI. So I normally stick to uh, comparing all of the specs is if you're using like a 7000, like, like a 7800X3D or a 9800X 3D. Uh, memory, you got four DIMMs, one, two, three, four, up to 256, which I always say is gonna be the standard now. I wonder in a few years time if the standard's gonna be something like a 512 because modules are just getting larger and larger. We only have 256 now because we now have the 64 gig modules before it used to be uh, 192, I believe, because we had the 48 gig modules. So every few years there will be an increase in density. I just want to put some memory in these boards. I always like to do that. I do apologize. I didn't put any memory in those two previous Aorus videos, the Stealth 
and the uh, Master X3D ice. I completely forgot for some reason, but I do like to put memory in just to see how it all looks with the board, how it blends in. And I think for this board, this looks really nice, this Corsair Vengeance. So I'd go something with like a non-RGB, very stealthy looking board. Now moving down to PCI and I can happily say, actually someone just recently commented, that commented with this exact same question on one of the Aorus videos. Are there any boards out there that does not have any lane sharing at all when it comes to things like your PCI and your M.2 or even your USB? Is there anything that's not shared? And I basically said, well, for that you need to look at a workstation board. But this board, from what I could see online on the manual, this has no lane sharing, mainly because it doesn't have five, six, seven M.2 and it doesn't have a heap of uh, electrically full speed uh, PCI slots. You may be like, well, there's three full 16s, but that's because this is a full 16 Gen 5, physically and electrically. But these two down the bottom are physically 16. That's the size of them, but they are only by one. So it's by one, by one. So there's no way you're gonna sacrifice this to get something else because there's nothing else that's gonna to wanna to use by one. It's normally if you have like a by four down the bottom, then that's normally traded off with an M.2 slot because then you can go by four for the M.2 or you can go by four for one of the bottom slots of it because these are by one each. They are rock solid as they are by one, by one. And then you have the by 16 is on its own, not shared with anything. So that's probably why you're not getting any trade-offs on this board because they haven't gone uh, balls to the wall and giving you maximum everything and the full slots. Uh, so for your M.2, we have one, two, three, Gen 5. And this one here is Gen 4. It does look like it's a Gen 5, but it's not. I looked on the manual. It doesn't say Gen 5, it just says M2. This one here says Gen 5, because Aorus, not all companies do this, but Aorus do put the Gen 5 little naming on those. And then we have the M.2 on there. So I believe for the config for these ones are, I like to specify whether they're CPU attached or the chipset attached. So we have your primary one, which is your CPU attached M uh, Gen 5. This is your M2A underscore CPU, your M2B underscore CPU, the so Gen 5, Gen 4, and then we have the M2C underscore SB is this one here. And these all support up to 22110. Uh, Actually, from what I can see, there's another standard 25110 is your max length uh, M.2, but for most people, something like a standard 2280, that's what these ones are. 2280, that is, I believe, 22 this way, 80 that way. That's how you get the measurement for these, if I can see to get that in. And now to get these in, you just push it straight down, and that went in super, super easy. I'm actually surprised you are getting uh, all of these, like, ease of use features. I'm trying to do this while looking at the camera at the top straight in like that. All of these extra features on this board, sometimes on these lower end ones, you normally get the old pesky little screws, even though that's not a deal breaker. It's not like you need to quick release your M.2s, is like something like plugging in a USB. It's really not that important, but it is nice to have those extra features. Uh, moving on to the IO, only single LAN. I would never expect to see anything like dual LAN on a sub $200 board, which this is. It is Realtek 2.5. And then for the Wi-Fi, we've got a Realtek Wi-Fi 7, which is this one here. And then once again, it's using the Wi-Fi EZ plug from Aorus, which is good that they've done that even on a board like this. And that supports the 160 megahertz band with up to 2.9 gigabit transfer weight. So you're still getting Wi-Fi 7, which is good. This is gonna be magnetic. Let me see, yep, sticks on like that. Metal case, stick it on, away you go. Now for the rear, USB. Now, one thing it is lacking is USB 4. So there's no USB 4 Type C. There's no USB 20. There's only USB 10 Type C. Now, on the B850 chipset, USB 4 isn't mandatory. Uh, even on XA70, it's not mandatory. So it's up to the uh, board vendor to put that on. And obviously, on a board this price, they're probably not going to worry about it. So there's a total of 12 on the rear. You've got the single 10 Type C. You got two more Type A, which are 10, which are the two reds, uh, 10 and 10. These four blue, or five blue, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, are your USB 5 gigabit type A. And then we have four USB 2.0, and that gives you the total of the 12 ports. For front USB, moving over here, we have a total of seven. Now, funnily, if I 
check this right. So it actually does have a 20 gigabit internal header for the front chassis, uh, front panel connector, which is pretty sweet. It's got a standard USB 3 header, which is this one over here. That'll give you your dual USB 3 for your case. And then it's got your dual USB 2 headers. So that'll give you your four things like fan controllers, RGB controllers, all of that annoying pesky stuff that you got to set up later on to get working to make your system look beautiful with all that RGB. Now, lastly, before we wrap this up, not a huge long one here. Obviously, the higher end boards are going to take a little bit more of talking about. We do have DisplayPort, DisplayPort version 1.4, uh, running off the Andy graphics from the CPU that's connected to. Max resolution of 3840 by 2160 at 144 hertz. That's pretty good, not as high as on those previous boards I covered, but still pretty decent. There's also HDMI, it's not on here at all, you might be wondering. Some reason Aorus are doing this, it's on some of the other boards. They have a front panel or front header HDMI, which is version 1.4. Now that only supports 1920 by 1080 by 30 hertz. Now, I'm not sure what you would use that for, maybe for if you're running like an internal screen, something like that. If cases, I know some cases previously had HDMI pass through to the top of the case. I'm not sure if that's a thing any, anymore, but let me let me know if you think HDMI on the internal part of the board is important. Um, but that's it, I think, on this board. Nothing too much. Final price on this is $199 USD on Amazon as of filming this video. Got to always be aware, check dates on videos because some people may come back to me in two months time. I've had this before and they say, hey, you got the price wrong, blah, 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 blah. I can't update every video with the price as it changes. So as of today of filming it, when this video launches in probably a few days time, that is the price, 199. So not too bad, pretty solid AMD board there. Another look on the back and it's actually not too uh, gamery. I think Aorus are playing it pretty safe on this board. I don't know what all of their boards look like, so I can't say on the other ones on behalf of those on how gamery they are, but this isn't too bad. Let me put this back on so we can get a better indication on what it looks like. That's on like that, or is it not? No, you got to feed the... They kind of need a little bit of a indicator to line that up. And push it down. There we go. So the only bit's there, but this is going to get covered with, with your graphics card. And even that isn't too gamery. This kind of looks like some type of AI, metadata, uh, animation, abstract, and then we just had the Aorus there. So nothing over the top. And anyway, I do want to thank Aorus for sending this out. It's been good to check out their new boards. Hopefully they have some new stuff coming and I can check out that. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.